Hello. First of all, I'd like to apologise for not being able to be with you in, pers in person today. But as you may be aware, I'm just recovering from an illness. But I'm very pleased to give some observations and reflections on this excellent publication, Global Citizenship Education, Eta Babreed, and, and the rest of the DICE team. I've had a great pleasure being involved with members of the DICE team for over the years from my long and standing involvement in this field of global citizenship and development education and global education. And I've always regarded the work that you've all been doing in Ireland as being very important and of high quality and highly valued, I know, um, elsewhere in Europe and beyond Europe. I'm speaking to you not only as director of the Development Education Research Centre, which is the sort of leading uh, research centre in the UK for promoting learning about global and sustainability issues, but also as co-chair of the Academic Network of Global Education and Learning, the ANGEL Network. And I want to say, speak about that as well as being director of the centre and its relationship to this publication, because the sense that from my own involvement in, bo in both being director of the centre and also co-chair of ANGEL, is the way in which this field of global citizenship and development education and global education learning have evolved and become much more mainstream over the past five to ten years. And to me, this publication is a way of epitomising the, the ways in which some of these issues are now much more reflected within areas of education, not only I know in Ireland, but beyond that. And the ANGEL Network, which was established in 2017, was a way of recognising this growth and in interest amongst academics and researchers around the world in our field and the sense in which that has become recognised internationally. Now, our network is very well supported and works quite closely with Global Education Network Europe, which is the coordinating body for policymakers across Europe and with support from the European Commission. And what the, that network has done on our work with the GE network and also for my broader work is to see the ways in which the themes of global citizenship, of learning about global issues, about education, sustainable development, become much more accepted within areas of education learning, within higher education, and obviously particularly in this context, within teacher education. We no longer have to argue why learning about global and sustainability issues are important. Teachers, young people, teacher educators, increasingly more and more academics, recognise these things. We are all surrounded by global and sustainability issues in all of our lives. They're very much part of what we are and how we engage the world. We are living in challenging times, as we know. The ways in which climate change has become much more centre stage is one examples of that. The re-emergence of wars in Europe and the Middle East have shown the increasing need to consider much more work on peace education. The continued divisions between the rich and the poor show the importance of learning about development and global issues continues to be important. And we also recognise the ways in which this denial of human rights still in many countries and the way, therefore, in which human rights education becomes more and more important. All these things have shown to me the value of all these areas of work and the value of what we're all trying to do. And this publication brings those things together well. The other thing that this publication does, which some other publications in the field of global citizenship education have not done as much as they should have done, is recognise the connections between global and sustainability issues, sustainability issues with questions of addressing racism, gender equality, the needs of refugees and migrants. And that also means that putting that together under what one could call anti-discriminatory practice. What I tend to call, talk about and flip that over and I talk about the need for a global social justice education. So to me, this whole field in which we're involved with, which is very much highlighted in this publication, is the sense to which we're talking about a global social justice education as being very central to what we're all trying to achieve and do. The other thing that this publication does, by bringing together these themes, also recognises the connections between the global and the local. 
we've done a lot of work about promoting the global in many recent years, but what globalization has shown us, reinforced by discussions around climate change and sustainability, and the questions about rights and citizenship, is that there's a connection between the global and the local, which we need to recognize. And then one of our challenges, I would suggest, is that we need to think about how we bring that local element into the discussions about the global, and also how do we bring the global dimension into discussions about local activities and local concerns. Those things, I think, are reflected to some extent in this publication. And I think that to me is one of the things that I'm very keen to how we are helping moving forward as how we make sure that what we're talking about, that global citizenship is not just seen as something out there somewhere far away or some high idealistic goal, but it's directly relevant to what we are and what we're doing on our day to day lives. So what I therefore particularly like about these vol this volume are that these themes are discussed in some detail. The discussions on human rights, the discussions on citizenship, discussions on migration, discussions on gender and discussions on inequalities. And I think those things are very much, I think, part of what we should all be talking about as global citizenship education, not as a series of separate topics, but as a way of being interconnected through, I would suggest, the theme of social justice. The other, the other things I like about this publication is the way in which you recognise the challenges many of us face as educators, working in a world of 24-7 culture, of instant, instant access to knowledge and communica communications channels that can often lead to uncritical and ill-informed comments and action. Therefore, the importance of the word critical and to looking at different viewpoints, questioning our own assumptions, has to be, I would suggest, more and more important in terms of what we do as global citizenship educators. Another theme Breed identifies in her introduction is that teaching is a form of activism. A few years ago, I wrote an article on teachers as agents of social change. Often when I've given talks to teachers, I ask them to remind themselves why they came into the profession. It's often because they want to make a difference, to make the world a better place. Teaching by itself cannot change the world, but education can empower and enthuse and equip learners of all ages to make a better world. So therefore, to me, the question about teaching as a form of activism is about recognising that we're a part of that process of seeking a more just and sustainable world. And I think that has to also to be brought in to our role as teacher educators. How do we do that? But do that in a way that's not threatening, that's not questioning, but is actually in a way almost liberating those future teachers to see the nature of their work. The final thing I'd like to say is that global citizenship education can often appear daunting and diff difficult regarding engagement with a lot of complex terms and with which there are no easy answers. This means looking at issues from a critical perspective, questioning assumptions and seeking a range of viewpoints and approaches. This approach is the heart of this excellent vol volume and it does so by giving its appendices some excellent examples of pedagogical approaches and I particularly recommend people looking at those pedagogical approaches because to me that brings some of those things to life. To me, Ireland at present provides some of the richest and most exciting initiatives on global citizenship education in the world. Its work on teacher education has meant it's often the first country people go to. And I would like to thank Irish Aid for their ongoing commitment to this field. Never has there been a greater need in education for resources like this one on global citizenship education. Many teachers are curious. Classrooms can be places for critical learning. But to achieve this requires resources, time 
policy support, and above all, passion and enthusiasm. This publication can play an important role in making all these things happen. Thank you and well done for everyone involved.